the NFL allowed flamethrowers during games, until one almost burned down a stadium and it was banned. Players even put on accessories that weren't allowed and should be illegal. There's a ton of things banned in the NFL. And first, this is something I'm glad they got rid of. The ugliest haircuts you'll ever see. Ugh, you got the opposite of a bowl cut. That's NFL player Tim Tebow, who became a victim to a weird Broncos tradition before the rule change. Whenever young players got drafted to their team, the older guys gave them the worst head game I've ever seen. Pause. No, literally, they'd give the haircuts out. Just look at some of these guys. There ain't no way they're getting laid with these. And after I saw a rat shaved into a player's head, not only did I say things were getting ridiculous, as soon as the Broncos hired a new coach, he felt like crazy cuts were a distraction to the team, forced Broncos players to get normal cuts from that point on, and these ugly ass cuts were banned. Thank God. But at least those haircuts didn't actually hurt anybody. What if I told you the NFL banned a jersey because it made people go blind? The NFL partnered up with Nike a few years ago on something they thought would be a dope new way of switching up teams' uniforms. They invented new colorways around the league that were going to be called Color Rush, which were basically uniforms that would feature the team's main colors, but would be much more vibrant than the plain Jane jerseys. And some of the Color Rush fits look decent. Like, I ain't gonna lie, these look cold as fuck. Ooh! Some other team's jerseys though, mm, they weren't so lucky. Fans were turning a lot of them into memes, like when they said they didn't know if they were watching Broncos vs Chargers or a scene from Finding Nemo. Other team's jerseys got them compared to dreamsicles, bottles of mustard, and one team's jersey even looked like a weather map. Real problems with the jerseys didn't happen until a week 10 matchup between the Bills and Jets though, cause what they wore had fans going blind. One team wearing red, another wearing green, to me it didn't seem like a big deal. To millions of other people watching though, this is what they saw. When this happens, That's because one in every 12 people, over 300 million people in the world, are colorblind, which made the red and green look like green and green. A bunch of fans were complaining on Twitter that they had no idea what the hell was going on during games because of the jerseys. And with all this backlash, the NFL not only dropped an official statement saying they didn't account for colorblindness when creating the Color Rush themed uniforms, because of the complaints, the NFL began forcing teams to wear opposite colors to prevent the issue from happening again, until it became too much of a hassle to gauge what colors would confuse fans. So eventually the league just stopped wearing Color Rush jerseys altogether, and they were banned. To be honest, I'm kind of sad about that, because some of these jerseys were fire. Speaking of fire though, what if I told you there was a time the NFL let players use flamethrowers? Until flamethrowing almost burned down an entire stadium. This fire has broken behind the stadium. On September 15, 2019, things got wild during the Titans home opener when the team wanted their players' introductions to be lit. So as the fans were hype anticipating their squad, the boys ran out with smoke and flames going off all around them, until out of nowhere. One of the machines damn near exploded when it burst into flames, sent smoke into the crowd, and destroyed part of the field. This was the first time an NFL team was caught burning grass on live TV. In all seriousness though, the situation was wild, and luckily the fire was put out with no injuries. That was a wake up call to the NFL though, and they weren't taking chances ever again. So from that point on, all flamethrowers were banned. But at least nobody lost any money from that situation. What Odell Beckham wore during a game wasn't only against the rules, it caused a $2 million controversy. After Odell was traded to the shit stains, uh, I mean, the Browns, and saw their brown and orange color scheme, he planned on wearing something no player had ever worn before in his first game with the team. During his debut, it was on him during all of his ridiculous highlights. But catches like those weren't what had the sports shows watching. Ironically, it was Odell's watch that had him talking, because he was the first player in history to wear one during a game. This wasn't just any timepiece though. It was a black and orange watch to match his team's colors, and was a $350,000 Richard Mill. Is Richard Mill. Yeah, 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 uh, whatever you say, Four Eyes. The NFL didn't care how anybody pronounced it. All they cared about was Odell violating the league's rule against wearing hard objects. Now, since it was his first offense and the NFL never dealt with this situation before, they just sent him a letter saying if he wore the watch again, he'd be fine. So, what do you think Odell did? Take your time, take your time. Apologized, ripped the letter up, moved to Mexico and changed his name to Jeff, whipped out something even harder during the next game. Uh, I already know you're thinking of D, so let's go with that. And yup, Odell came out during the next game for warmups with something that went even more viral. This time, it wasn't just one of the rarest watches in the world, it was another Richard Mill. Richard Mill. Uh, 
Dude, I don't give a shit. Get the fuck out of here. Odell wore a Torbillion Sapphire version worth over $2 million. Now, since there's only 10 of those ever made, Odell took it off before the game so he didn't break it making catches like this. After the game, he did put it on again to flex it during interviews, though. You show us the watch. And, and what's so important about a $2 million watch besides that it's cost $2 million? I'm off of it. I don't really have any comment about it, you know. I'm just blessed. Now this time, his watch was blowing up more than ever. So fans began looking into his watch and found something shocking. Cause not only did people figure out that Odell's watch was made of cheap plastic and not sapphire, the K shape was wrong. Someone even showed the inside parts of the watch saying it was horrible, was $20, made in China, and that Odell's watch was so bad compared to the real one that it was like comparing a wheelbarrow to a Bugatti. And just to put that into perspective, yeah, obvious difference. So Odell really went against the NFL rules to wear something fake, even though it was banned. But something other NFL players are never faking, which causes fines they're for sure paying, is when they go against the rules to do a banned celebration. NFL players are known to do wild things during games. Very good at bowling. <laughs> it's disrespectful. And some celebrations are allowed, cause you know, the league stated that using the football as a prop after a touchdown, celebrating on the ground, and group demonstrations were okay. The NFL recently laid out some strict rules about what isn't allowed though. One, the first type of celebrations that aren't allowed are ones that are offensive. Like when a player shit out a football, when players disrespected fans. You step on dicks. You, you, you that is a disgusting act by Randy Moss. Or when a player even showed off his stroke game. Oh, and that is a monster hole. God damn, this is the NFL, not the HUB. Anyways, the second type of celebrations that aren't allowed are ones that take forever or delay the game. Like here, when obviously nearly breaking down the entire goalpost is gonna delay the game a bit to fix and is banned. But the third type of celebrations that aren't allowed are the ones that are directed at an opponent. Like when Justin Jefferson recently caught a touchdown and let his defender know how big he was. They really told him he's too small after that. Or when AJ Hawk got a sack, they told his opponents, F you. Now to me, player celebrations like those, or any that they might do, are some of the things I look forward to. They violate those rules though, players can find thousands on thousands on thousands of dollars if they do celebrations that are banned. Damn, the NFL is not messing around, in the real world or in the virtual world. Cause I bet you didn't know there's even things the NFL banned in Madden. Madden is obviously the most popular game the league's teams and players, and you'd think the NFL wouldn't put any rules on characters. <clears throat> they did though. There's actually a lot of things the league took out because of concerns in real life. On the field, they do not like when players remove their helmets while playing because of how dangerous that can be. So not only is that something that's not allowed in Madden, even though in-game players were able to actually knock helmets off their opponents with huge hits like this, the NFL forced developers to remove that feature from the game so players weren't trying to purposely injure another's head. And speaking of head, Obviously another controversial topic in real life has been the constant injuries of players getting concussions, where it's caused a worldwide debate of fans feeling like football is a completely unsafe sport. So to try and suppress how many times those injuries are found out about, in Madden games, the league literally got concussions taken out, and they also removed ambulances so no players could be virtually taken off the field, even though that happens in real life. But there's definitely a lot more things in Madden the No Fun League has taken out that's ridiculous though. Like when customizing teams, they specifically requested that fans could not change the colors of NFL team logos. I mean... Eh, I kinda don't blame them, cause just seeing what fans did with some of these logos was ugly as shit. I do kinda f with this Eagles one though. Anyways, the NFL also doesn't even let you customize players' equipment, which isn't really a surprise cause they're lame about it in real life too. On field, a lot of players have tried wearing custom cleats that were dope. Alvin Kamara wore some Christmas themed ones to spread some holiday cheer. Brandon Marshall wore some slime green to raise awareness towards mental health. A couple hype beasts repped some designer on the field like Devontae Adams wearing Dior, and DeAndre Hopkins even wore some Yeezys. Some of my personal favorite custom cleats were solid gold ones that Marshawn Lynch and even Chad Ochocinco tried repping while they were stepping. Unfortunately though, something tells me that the shoe game is definitely something the NFL ain't familiar with. Probably cause them old heads are still wearing some plain Jane ass Skechers. So the policy they put in real life and in Madden are that all players must wear shoes that are black, white, or a team color. Like bruh. There's so many different cleats that players would wear, go viral for, and would cause so much attention to the league, and even make the sport look a hundred times more cool if they got rid of that dumbass rule, man. But the craziest band the NFL made in Madden is when they purposely ruined a song. 
Back in 2018, one of the biggest hits in rap was something I was even bumping myself, and just listen to this beat for a sec, hey, I'm sure you can feel why. Big Bang was a song that was super hot, so when Madden 19 was about to release, of course they wanted it in their soundtrack. When it got put into the game though, fans noticed something weird. Now, usually a cut like that is something I'd assume was a line that was inappropriate. Just google in the lyrics though. As you can see by the line, it actually just mentioned a player who's banned from the NFL himself, Colin Kaepernick, and the line should've went like this. Feed me to the wolves, now I lead the pack and shit, you boys all cap, I'm more Colin Kaepernick. So, obviously after that, the situation went viral. Even the rapper himself, Big Sean, tweeted out that it's disappointing and appalling that NFL and EA took Kaepernick's name up my verse for Mad 19 like it was a curse word, when he's not a curse, he's a gift. Either way though, between that song, Cleats, ambulances, injuries, all cause of the NFL, each of those things were banned. But imagine only becoming an NFL legend because you used something illegal throughout your career. The cheating started in 1985 when one of the most hyped players in NFL history, Jerry Rice, began taking over the lead. Throughout his career, he became a superstar, one of the most legendary players ever. And literally 90% of people consider him the GOAT wide receiver, alright? To this day, he still holds the record for most receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns of all time. His career numbers were so crazy, he was unanimously chosen to be in the Hall of Fame. But after damn near a perfect career, Jerry let us know a secret. I know this might be a little illegal, guys. I just put a little spray, a little stick em on them, you know, just to make sure that texture is uh, a little sticky. Now, all right, as weird as it sounds for a grown man to admit he likes getting his hands a little sticky before playing with balls, what he was actually referring to was a substance the NFL hasn't allowed since 1981, four years before Jerry even got into the league, called stick'em. Anything this was applied to caused it to have better grip, so, I mean, I get it. Jerry still had to be out there on the field and make the catches, but setting so many records and becoming a go because of that, I mean, it really makes you wonder what he really would have become if he wasn't using something that the NFL banned. Damn. At least he admitted it though, cause there's a lot of things NFL players don't tell us. Like this player's secret about his mouth, how Tom Brady was almost killed. There's even an NFL player whose Call of Duty addiction is taking over his life. And that's just the beginning of things in this video. Wait, did you hear that? Holy fuck, someone just broke into my house! Click this video before they get you too! Aha!